Hi students, this is Dr. Gonzalez. I hope you're having a good day when you're watching this video or a good night if you're watching it overnight. And let's just go ahead and get started with the following topics. The mediastinum is a central compartment of the thoracic cavity, which is located between the lungs and the pleural sacs. And so it has a couple of boundaries. What you're looking at here right now, this is the thoracic cavity without the lungs and without the heart. And you can see a lot of structures there on that cavity posteriorly. In purple, what you're looking at right now, just for us as a reference, it's the trachea. The boundaries for the mediastinum includes superiorly the superior thoracic aperture, which is this area right here. Inferiorly, it's the diaphragm, which is this structure you see right here. Anteriorly, it's going to be the sternum. Posteriorly, it's going to be the vertebral column, specifically the thoracic vertebra. And laterally, it's going to be the mediastinal pleura. The subdivisions of the mediastinum include inferiorly, middle, anterior, and posterior. So, in general, you're going to imagine a horizontal plane passing from the sternal angle, this is basically the sternal angle, to T4, T5 intervertebral disc around this point right here, or inferior border of the body of T4. And this divides the mediastinum into superior and inferior parts. Now, if you notice, just to give you a point of reference, this is going to be anterior on this drawing, and this is going to be posterior in this drawing because you can see the vertebrae right here, and you can see the sternum over here. So the inferior mediastinum is further subdivided into anterior, middle, and posterior parts. So we're looking at this part right now. And the medial mediastinum it's where we have the pericardial sac with its contents. The anterior mediastinum, it's located between the body of the sternum and the pericardial sac over here. And the posterior mediastinum, it's located between the pericardial sac and the vertebral columns, typically T5 to T12 over here. So let's take a look at the superior mediastinum in this picture. The superior mediastinum, as you can see, it's bounded anteriorly by the manubrium, which is this structure right here, and posteriorly by the upper four thoracic vertebrae. And this structure, or this area, I must say, contains the following structures. The thymus, or its remains, the large veins, such as the right and left brachiocephalic veins and the superior vena cava, also large arteries such as the aortic arch and its branches, the trachea, esophagus, thoracic duct, sympathetic trunks, and the vagus and phrenic nerves. In the inferior mediastinum, over here, this one it's going to be bounded anteriorly by the body of the sternum, which is this represented by the area, and posteriorly by the lower athoracic vertebrae right here. And this area contains the thymus or its remains, the heart, and the roots of the great vessels within the pericardium with the phrenic nerves on each side, also the esophagus, thoracic duct, descending thoracic aorta, and also the sympathetic trunks and ascygus venous system. Now let's discuss a few of the organs that we're going to find inside of the mediastinum. We're going to start with the thymus. The thymus is this structure over here. It consists of two flat flask-shaped lobes located superficially or anteriorly in the superior and anterior parts of the mediastinum. And it occasionally reaches upwards through uh, the superior thoracic aperture into the root of the neck and sometimes as high as the lower pole of the thyroid gland. This organ, the main function is to produce T lymphocytes, which are discharged into the bloodstream and seed other lymphatic organs, such as the lymph nodes, tonsils, etc. 
And this organ, it's going to be largest in the early parts of life, such as in uh, puberty. Uh, but eventually, it involutes or disappears, and it's replaced by fat as we become adults. So some of the anterior relationships for the thymus, it's the sternum and adjacent parts of the upper three costal cartilages and the anterior margins of the pleural sacs and lungs. And then posteriorly, it's going to be the pericardial sac, the left brachiocephalic vein, aortic arch, and its branches, and also the trachea. Another structure is the brachiocephalic veins which are those two structures you see over there in light blue. These are formed by the union of the subclavian and internal jugular veins at the root of the neck. The right brachiocephalic vein is short and it joins the left brachiocephalic vein posterior to the first right costal cartilage at the right border of the sternum to form the superior vena cava. The left brachiocephalic vein is longer and oblique and it runs to the right and slightly inferiorly to join the right brachiocephalic vein. The relations anteriorly, it's going to be the manubrium of the sternum and the thymus and the posterior relations, it's going to be the branches of the aortic arch and the trachea. Another structure, it's the superior vena cava which returns to the heart of the venous blood from the upper half of the body, including the head, neck, upper limbs, thoracic wall, and some thoracic organs, including the esophagus, the trachea, the bronchi, and the pericardium. This vein is formed posteriorly by the union of the right and left brachiocephalic veins and it descends vertically and it terminates in the upper part of the right atrium. The upper part, it's located in the superior mediastinum and the lower part, it's located within the pericardial sac in the middle mediastinum. Some of the tributaries, it's gonna be the ascygos veins that joins the superior vena cava just before it enters the pericardial sac. Another structure is the inferior vena cava or IVC. This structure returns to the heart, the venous blood from the lower half of the body, including the abdomen, the pelvis, and the lower limbs. It has a very short course in the middle mediastinum, and it pierces the central tendon of the diaphragm at the level of T8. Almost immediately terminates in the lower part of the right atrium. Another very important structure in the mediastinum is the aorta. The aorta has three parts. It has an ascending part or ascending aorta. It has the arch of the aorta and it has a descending aorta, which later it's gonna be subdivided by the diaphragm into thoracic and abdominal parts. Let's get started with the ascending aorta. The ascending aorta begins at the aortic orifice of the left ventricle and it runs, this is right here your left uh, part of the ventricle, and it runs superiorly, anteriorly, and to the right and it terminates at the level of the sternal angle where it becomes continuous with the aortic arch. This structure lies within the pericardial sac in the middle mediastinum and some of the branches include the right and left coronary arteries. The second part is the arch of the aorta which begins at the level of the sternal angle as a continuation of the ascending aorta. It passes posteriorly and to the left, forming a superior convex arch that terminates on the left side at the level of T4, T5 intervertebral areas or the lower border of the body of T4, where it becomes continuous with the descending thoracic aorta. This is located in the superior mediastinum and it arches over the root of the left lung. It has three branches as you can see right here. It has a brachiocephalic artery or trunk. This structure passes posteriorly and to the right anterior to the trachea and it divides into a right subclavian artery and a right common carotid artery. The second branch, it's gonna be 
the left common carotid artery, which ascends in the superior mediastinum along the left side of the trachea, and it passes through the th superior thoracic aperture to reach the root of the neck. And the third one is gonna be the left subclavian artery. This one ascends in the superior mediastinum along the left side of the trachea, and it passes through the superior thoracic aperture to reach the root of the neck, and it arches over the apex of the left lung and the first left rib towards the left upper limb. Another structure is called the ligamentum arteriosum, and this is a fibrous brand that you can observe here in yellow. It's a fibrous band connecting the beginning of the left pulmonary artery to the lower surface of the aortic arch, and this is a remnant of a structure that we call ductus arteriosus. And so ductus arteriosus, uh, during the intrauterine life, it carries blood from the pulmonary trunk of, uh, to the aorta by passing the lungs. After birth, it closes and becomes the ligamentum arteriosus. In some babies, there's a condition called patent ductus arteriosus, which is when the ductus arteriosus does not close after birth, and these carries blood from the aorta to the pulmonary trunk in a left to right shunt, non-cyanotic, and it causes pulmonary hypertension and hypertrophy of the right ventricle. Next is the descending thoracic aorta. This structure begins at the level of T4 or T5 intervertebral disc on the left side as a continuation of the aortic arch and it passes inferiorly and slightly medially in the posterior mediastinum. At the level of T12 it passes through an aortic hiatus in the diaphragm and it becomes continuous with the abdominal aorta. Some of the branches of the thoracic or descending thoracic aorta includes the posterior intercostal arteries for the lower nine intercostal spaces, subcostal arteries that run along the border of the 12 ribs, the esophageal, bronchial, and pericardial branches, and the superior phrenic arteries that supply the posterior part of the su superior surface of the diaphragm. And if you want to learn more about this information, check out this video that we have tagged over here. And that's it for today. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you on the next one.